what's up guys today i'm bringing you the summary uh, the second summary of the kai beloved country so please guys listen carefully and take notes because this could help you at your final examination in the remote village of Ndochen, in natal province of eastern south africa the Reverend Stephen Pumal receives a letter from a fellow minister summoning him to Johannesburg, a city in South Africa. He is needed there. The letter says to help his sister get through to the letter says he has fallen ill. Kumal undertakes the difficult and expensive journey to the city in the hopes of aiding Gertrude and of finding his son Absalom who traveled to Johannesburg from Dojen and never returned. In Johannesburg, Kumalo is warmly welcomed by Msimang, the priest who sent him the letter, and given comfortable lodging by Miss Litter, a Christian woman who, be, who feels that helping others is her duty. Kumalo visits Gertrude, who is now a prostitute and a liquor seller and persuades her to come back to Ndojen with her young son. A more difficult quest follows when Kumal and Simang begin to searching the labor rights metropolis of Johannesburg for Absalom. They visit Kumalo's brother John, who has become a successful businessman and a politician, and he directs them to the factory where his and son and Absalom once worked together. One clue leads to another, and as Kumalo travels from place to place, he begins to see the gaping racial and economic divisions that are threatening to split his country. Eventually, Kumalo discovers that his son has spent time in a reformatory and that he has gotten a girl pregnant. Meanwhile, the newspaper announced that Otto Jovis, a prominent white crusader for racial justice, has been murdered in his home by a gang of bagalas. Kumal and Simang learned that po the police are looking for Absalom. And Kumalo's worst suspicions are confirmed when Absalom is arrested for Jovis' murder. Absalom has confessed to the crime. But he claims that two others, including John Kumalo's son, made you aided him and that he did not intend to murder Jarvis. With the help of friends, Kumalo obtains a lawyer for, for Absalom and attempts to understand what his son has become. John, however, makes arrangements for his son's own son's defense, even though he split will worsen Absalom's case. When Kumalo tells Absalom's pregnant girlfriend what has happened, she is saddened by the news, but she joyfully agrees to his proposal that she marry his son and return to Ndojen as Kumalo's daughter-in-law. Meanwhile, in the hills above Ndojen, Otto Jovis' father, James Jovis, tends his boatful beautiful land and hopes for rain. The local police bring him news of his son's death and he leaves immediately for Johannesburg with his wife. In an attempt to come to terms with what has happened, Jovis reads his son's article and speeches on social inequality and becomes a radical reconsideration of his own produce. He and Kumalo meet for the very first time by accident, and after Kumalo has recovered from his shock, he expresses sadness and regret for Jervis' loss. Both men attend Absalom's trials, a fairly straightforward process that ends with the death penalty for Absalom and an acquittal for his co conspirators Kumalo arranges for Absalom to marry the girl who bears his children, children, child, and they bid farewell. 
the morning of his departure. Kumalo roses his new family to bring them back to Ndocheni only to find that Gertrude has disappeared. Kumalo is now deeply aware of how his people have lost the tribal structure that once held them together, and he returns his village troubled by the situation. It turns out that James Jarvis has been having similar thoughts. Otta Jarvis' young son befriends Kumalo, and as the young boy and the old man become acquainted, James Jarvis becomes increasingly involved with helping the struggling village. He donates milk at first, then he makes plans for a dam and hires an agriculture expert to demonstrate newer, less devastating farming techniques. When Jarvis' wife dies, Kumalo and his congregation send a rent to express their sympathy. Just as the deceased bishop is on venge of transferring Kumalo, Jarvis sends a note of thanks for the rent and offers to build the congregation a new church and Kumalo is permitted to stay in his parish. On the evening before his son's ex execution, Kumalo goes into the mountains to await the appointed time to solitude. On the way, he encounters Jovis and the two men speak of the village of Los Sands and of Jovis' bright young grandson, whose innocence and honesty have impressed both men. When Kumalo is alone, he weeps for his son's death and clasps his hands in prayer as dawn breaks over the valley. Thank you guys for taking your time to listen to the whole video. I hope this will help you at your exam examination and everything guys. Really thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace. And 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 new audiobook will be released soon. Peace.